This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you a little productivity trick that you can use in Zed. And by that, I mean, we're going to be covering the topic of snippets. And in case you don't know what a snippet is, it's practically just a pre-made template. For example, if you want to create a class, you can just type in class. You can say this is a fruit, use tab, then type in grams of type integer, tab again and then type in self.grams equals grams. As you can see, that was pre-made for me because I created this template which I could easily fill in. And you can do this for literally anything in Python. Another very good example is when I create my if name is equal to main check. I hate having to type that all out. And this ends up saving me a lot of time because really all I have to do is fill in the blanks. So fruit of type fruit equals fruit. And that could have some grams, maybe 10 grams. And that should be apple. And that's all it took for me to write all of this code. At the end of the day, all I did is create the name of fruit, added some grams, created this part here, and then I instantiated it. But the rest was just a pre-made template. And you can also do it for silly things such as creating a function. In case you don't want to fill that out every single time, you can say this is a function. It has a variable of type integer. And that's all. I mean, as you could see, function and function were filled out simultaneously, which is quite convenient. So the next time we actually call this function with some random number, it's going to say that function was called. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. And to get started, you're going to want to open up your search because what we need to search for are the snippets. And here you have the option to open a folder or to configure the snippets. And the first one is going to open up your folder, which contains all of your snippets. Here I have one for C and Python. Yours is probably going to be empty if it's the first time you're doing that. So let's open up that search bar once again type in snippets and tap on configure snippets. Here you're going to want to search for Python and tap on enter. Now, as you can see, mine is filled with snippets, but to make this easy to understand, I'm just going to remove everything and we're going to start from scratch. So first of all, you need to realize that this is a JSON file, which means we need to start this with curly brackets. And the first thing we need to do is give our shortcut or our template a name. For example, here we can type in default function. Then inside here, we can start opening this up with another pair of curly brackets. By default, this is going to be used as the snippet shortcut, which means if we go back to our main file and type in default function, once we complete that snippet, this is going to insert the snippet that we created. Otherwise, you can choose to provide a prefix. And a prefix is more or less the shortcut you actually want to use when you want to insert this template. So here, for example, we can just type in def and def will be used instead of default function. Then we can provide something such as a description, which will describe what our snippet actually does. And here we can type in something such as a simple function template. Then all that's left for us to do is to define how the body should look. So here we're going to type in body and this is going to be a list. So practically each line is going to correspond to an element. And to get started on line number one, we're going to type in def followed by the first element that we want to insert. And here we can use the dollar symbol followed by the number to determine the first place where tab should take us or the first placeholder that we want to change. For example, with dollar sign one, the first time we call our shortcut, it's going to put our cursor here. And if we open up the parentheses and add dollar sign two, once we tap on tab, it's going to lead us here. So let's save that and test it out. Now on main.py, we can type in def and as you can see, it's going to put us in front of the parentheses. So here we can write function, tap on tab, and then insert var of type integer. But something more useful would be to give it a default value because we might not want these to be empty. So what we can do here is add a pair of curly brackets and add the default value, which for the first one is going to be an ellipses. And I'm going to do the same thing for number two. So colon ellipses. But for the return value, I'm going to do something slightly different dollar sign three, and I'm going to insert none as the default value. So now if we go back to main and type in def, we should get those placeholders. So we can type in function. If we don't care about this, we can also exclude it, tap on tab, and it's still going to take us to none in case we want to switch that. It's a default value, so we can easily skip it by tapping on tab. Now what's annoying here is that it leaves the cursor after none. If only there was a way to insert it directly under. Well, luckily there is. So let's push this back down 
And as the second element, what we're going to do is add dollar sign zero. Dollar sign zero determines the final destination of the cursor. Although before we go back to main.py and try to call this, we're going to add four spaces so that it is indented properly. Now let's go back to main.py, use our placeholder, call it function, give it no arguments, and now we can print hello world. And when we run this, obviously nothing's going to happen because I always forget to run it or to call it. But once we actually call that function, it should give us back hello world. So as you can see, it's that simple to create a placeholder. All you need to keep in mind is that each one of these elements simulates a line. But there's one last thing I want to cover, and that is that if you use the same number in two places, such as, such as I did right here, it's going to insert text in both places at the exact same time. So hypothetically, we can print dollar sign one was called. And if we go back to main.py and type in def, we can call function, this time give it a value, var of type integer, tap on tab and tap on tab once again. And this time you'll see that function was named here and named here at the exact same time, which is very convenient. And this was just an oversimplified example to give you an idea on how this actually works. And if you want to add another snippet, all you need to do is insert a comma and start over. So you can say default class, for example, and then start your journey from here. Now the snippets I had earlier, were for creating my if name is equal to main check. So in case you're curious on how I did that, you can just pause the screen here and copy this. Otherwise to create a class, this is the syntax I used. Otherwise for my example case, which is the function, it looks something like this. And I didn't show it to you, but if you were to remove the prefix and go back to your main.py file, you can literally just type in the title. You can say example case, and that should work the exact same way but I prefer to have the prefix. And I probably should give it a better title, such as create a function. So yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. I know that most code editors have this feature, so I just wanted to show you how it was done in Z because in PyCharm, I would use it all the time and there they call them live templates. But here they're just called snippets and they're very quick to create or very easy to create as you can see. And we can print hello, Bob because it's been a while since we've greeted our neighbor, Bob. And there we go. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know what you think about snippets in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.